In which axis is tenosynovitis best demonstrated on MSK ultrasound? The answer is short axis. When describing planes in MSK ultrasound, it's best to use the terms long and short axis instead of sagittal and transverse planes. This is because we're describing the position of the transducer relative to the structure, not the plane of the body. Tendons should always be scanned in both the long and short axis on your MSK ultrasound exam. In this example, we're looking at the posterior tibial tendon in the medial compartment of the ankle. The protocol is to scan the PTT in the short and long axis from proximal to distal. This patient had tenosynovitis in the tendon sheath. The fluid was fully visualized surrounding the tendon in the short axis. A good rule of thumb for reporting pathologic tenosynovitis is to only call it when the fluid is visualized fully encircling the tendon. It is normal for there to be a normal physiologic amount of fluid in the tendon sheath. A minimal amount of fluid in the tendon sheath should not be reported as tenosynovitis. That was the appearance of how the fluid in the tendon sheath looked in the short axis, which was very easy to visualize. But when you're scanning in the long axis, you could see that the fluid isn't as well visualized when you're following the protocol of scanning in the long axis from proximal to distal. In order to fully demonstrate the amount of fluid present in the tendon sheath, you must also do a sweep through the thickness of the tendon in the long axis. Since fluid lies in the tendon sheath surrounding the tendon, if you don't sweep through the entire tendon thickness, you may not fully appreciate the fluid on the long axis images. In this case, the PTT was also scanned from anterior to posterior to demonstrate the extent of the fluid present in the long axis images. As you could see, there's a significant amount of fluid present that wasn't visualized in the initial long axis images. The directional terms such as proximal to distal or anterior to posterior will vary based on the tendon you're scanning. You should use your best judgment to label the images using the correct directional terms based on anatomical position. Hope that helps.